Yo, back up, back up, back up, back up. How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today we are going to be going to a few car events. I'm thinking cars and coffee to start the day and then probably a ratchet car meet to end the day. Uh, we will be taking the Supra of course to cars and coffee and then maybe the Mustang to the other car meet later. I'll have to see how I feel. Um, the Supra is just a little too nice right now and I don't really want it to get messed up at a car meet or something like that. So I don't think it would but I don't want it to happen. So anyways, um, we're going to take this. We'll head out. I did turn on a little image stabilizer. I'm going to put it on for now, and then tonight I'll turn it off just to see if I see a difference. I don't know. Let me know. Comment down below. Anyways, let's go. Brian, you're taking the coffee out of Cars and Coffee. I know. Dude, that, that Starbucks thing over there is long. Oh, oh well, yeah. I mean, that, that, that Starbucks takes the, uh, the cars out of the, <laughs> <laughs> out out of of the, the meat. Cars and coffee, yeah. <laughs> so. Still waiting on his parts. I haven't them. ordered anything. Yeah, well, still waiting on the money then. <laughs> still waiting on the money. Well, I want to fix the IS first. Yeah. That way I have less broken chip boxes. Welcome so. to the club. We have this boy's Kia Stinger right there, which is what, like full bolt on E85 or E60 or something? Uh, yeah, the thing, it's not E85 yet, but it's got meth, like methanol, so oh, it's okay. cooler uh, temperatures to make up that difference that's cool. for the E. Yeah. So it's pretty much right. Yeah. That's cool. And but, then, um, this piece of shit. And then we got the sick Hyundai. No. Yeah, he's pulling up too. <laughs> yeah, the Hyundai's coming too. No, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, now the car looks good. I mean, I think the dust came off when I pulled it out of the garage this morning. It was covered in dust because I hadn't driven it in like weeks. And it looks clean, so I think the dust came off. I think that ceramic shit actually kind of works. So let's go to Cars and Coffee. It does, I think it Poor man's Lamborghini. No, the drop. <laughs> <laughs> the it's still Lamborghini. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, guys, we just got to Cars and Coffee. We're gonna do a lap, walk around, see what there is. I think I saw an E-Ray pulling in. Might be a Z06, so we're gonna try to find that car and look at it. I haven't seen either of those in person, so I'm curious how it looks compared to a normal C8 Corvette. So let's go walk around. All right, so here's the two side by side. Here is the Z06. It's not an E-Ray. It is a Z06 comes with better wheels in my opinion there's actually some shape to them we have the z06 badge right here the rear wheel like i said good enough to be an aftermarket wheel yet alone it is stock has some nice concave to it there's a pile of shit right there that i stepped in a second ago looking at the car and then the rear of the car i think it is missing a wing i think it needs a wing like the two c8s right there um but still i've not seen a z06 in person yet and first impression it's, it's pretty sweet his fuel door is open his fuel door is 100 percent open it's hard to tell, but uh, the base C8 is not as thick. I don't think we'll be able to see it as clear right here. Uh, maybe. I mean, you can see these two. They're kind of straight up and down with their, with their cuts. And then we'll go to the Z06. You could also see the base C8 wheels are a lot more just straight up and down. There's not really much shape to them. They're just really flat. And that's one of my biggest complaints with the C8. Where the Z06 is a tad thicker and has a bit more shape to it. Again, hard to tell, but... It is nice. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, it was a little too early for me to put on the Drew Peacock persona. I'm gonna keep it transparent with you. I didn't feel like talking or filming while I was there. 8 a.m. is just a little too early for me, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna voice this over. All right, first car was this rat rod with some of the prettiest headlights I've ever seen uh, because the headlights were replaced with turbos with filters somewhat of filters anyways we have a twin turbo ls i'm guessing um it looks like some sort of chevy motor giant turbo with a little uh turbo guard the interior probably not the most comfortable thing but when you're rolling around in a thing that looks like it's a uh, 99 rust i mean what do you expect he has his uh radiator mounted to the rear he has big old mickey thompson et street r's this thing looks like it gets down and my boy brian was saying that i should build one of these i would love to but that looks expensive and i don't have the room right now maybe after i sell a couple cars i'd be down 
What's a good old Cars and Coffee without a little Corvette action? There were plenty of these, a lot of brochures laid out as well, but a C6 ZR1 in my opinion, one of if not the best Corvette ever produced. I love the C6, maybe it's because I grew up right around that time, but the C6 is just so iconic in my opinion, and he did have one of the weirdest looking exhausts. I don't know why he threw on some sort of wrapped suppressor from Call of Duty, but uh, yeah, I wonder how it sounded. I kind of wish I heard it, but very nice looking track car. C6 Corvette equals best Corvette, don't at me. Mark three Supras that aren't a piece of shit? Now that's not an everyday sight, I know. This one was in pretty good shape. It was on some ESRs. The paint was immaculate. I wonder if it was a respray. It looked like a manual. I did not see any intercooler or anything underneath the hood. It might be boosted, it might not, but I didn't really check. I was just really impressed with how good of shape this is. God, I wish I could find one in this good of shape, throw in a 2JZ and call it a day. This had to have been one of the most impressive cars at Cars and Coffee. It's a 427 swapped Volkswagen Beetle, front engine, rear wheel drive, madman fucking car right here. You have to have a nutsack the size of some bowling balls to drive this thing around. There was no space on the interior. There was no space in the wheel. Well, he somehow managed a 335 in the rear. Don't know how. Looks like it's got a drag wing on the rear. I mean, dude, this thing is just absolutely insane. I don't know how he managed to do it, but if there's a will, there's a way. And this guy made it happen. Hadn't seen this car before. And I was really, really pleased to see this there. Cars and coffee is not all junk, and that's why I enjoy going to those. Regular car meets, as we'll see later on, majority is junk. Although I did record some pretty good builds there, so you'll have to stick around. But look at the interior. No room in whatsoever. The motor. Fit snug. Tiniest little belt ever. And somehow he made it work. Very impressive car. There are a lot of cars at these Cars and Coffees, and a lot of people say, Drew, you, you missed out on a lot of good builds. There, if I stopped and recorded every single car that was nice, I'd be here for hours, literally. And the video would be for hours. It's, it's just impossible. And we got this bad boy right here. Sick. Glad you popped the hood. Anyways, Mustang, Roush, Stage 3. I don't see too many Roushes in person. I seem to see them all the time at Cars and Coffee, but I never see them driving around. So they must just spawn at Cars and Coffee. The old men that buy them, just, they must just leave them there overnight. I think this was the only three valve there, and I was really interested to see what was going on, and it was a whole lot of nothing. But it did have a brochure. I was interested in it. I was like, oh, I'm going to walk around this car really quick and see that brochure. We had a soft top. It was in, I guess, Grabber Orange, which is a nice color. It's not bad. I, I don't mind it. I think it's pretty nice. Um, I, don't, I don't like the soft top. I don't think many people do, but I was like, all right, let's see what his brochure says. I'm kind of curious. Let's see what it says. Uh, he's hyping up his GTCS, number 40-something of who cares. Sick. I'm glad you kept it stock. This guy, however, huh, don't look too stock to me. Now, it is a super snake. I guess they come with the, the Kenny Bell mammoth on top, but still, if I'm going to have a stock car, it's going to be something like this, you know, a Shelby of some sort. That's one thing that a lot of people ask me, Drew, should I buy a Shelby GT500 or a Mustang and supercharge it? If you're just going to leave it stock and you just want to be one and done, just buy the Shelby. Just just buy the Shelby. One and done. You can keep your warranty if you buy a certain year. And it, it's going to be reliable for the most part and put down good power. If you want to go crazy, you could still buy the Shelby, but I mean, you, you can make more power for cheaper with just a Mustang GT, depending on the year, like I said. But uh, this is a very clean Super Snake. Hadn't seen an S197 Super Snake in quite some time. Trying to figure out what catches my eye. And then I saw the 720 right here in that nice burnt copper color. Mm, look at that. Look at the fitment. Look at it aired out. Oh my God. It's got rift carbon fiber all over it. Absolutely beautiful. Now I know he wishes he had a 12C. And if this guy wants to trade, I might, I might consider it. Go ahead and hit my DMs if you want my 12C. But uh, <laughs> all jokes aside absolutely beautiful uh one of the best looking supercars there and uh i really enjoyed taking a look at it it, it was clean now let's move on to some jdm cars we got this clean evo right here volk te 37s all the way around beautiful fitment beautiful wheel and tire setup looks like a driver not something he just pulls up and parks at least i hope not because this thing looks like so much fun i want one i mean i'm happy i have the subi but this just looks a little bit smaller a little bit more nimble a little bit more capable and it is a mitsubishi so it's, it's it, it can make more power. It just breaks down probably just as much as a Subaru, though. Next Mustang had its hood up, so we had to do a hood check. Checking underneath the hood. Warranty is still intact. I will report it to Ford. Thank you for showing me that. He had this really thick, wide body can. I was a little like, hmm, those, those wheels, I know they're, they're not that big. Let, let's see uh, let's see what kind of tire we got on this bad boy. It's a 295 or 285. It, it's not that big. He has like a six-inch spacer, though. Look at that thing. 
poor axles, dude. That 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 drivetrain is tired, man. That thing is exhausted. He's like, please, please let me just race. That's all I want to do. I don't I don't want to do this. Please. Yeah, I mean, personally, if it was me and I was building a wide body car like that, I would just get the correct offset and not do giant spacers like that. Some people say it's really dangerous. I don't think it's that dangerous, but I just wouldn't do it like that. Next up, we had a prelude with a, a makeshift wing. Uh, the wing itself wasn't makeshift, but the mounts were. The mounts were very makeshift, and they were, they were very obvious. I think this guy tagged me on a story. No disrespect, but uh, you, you made it fit. You, ma you made the wing fit, sort of. I mean, it sort of fits. Just maybe trim the middle and like weld it in the middle. You also made this tow hook fit. If there's a will, there's a way, and he made it fit. But yeah, I mean, overall, it's... It's a prelude. It, it drives. It made it to the meet. More than most cars can say. Alright guys, we got back. I'm exhausted. I'm gonna go relax. And then we'll take her out later tonight. I'll see you guys then. Alright, time for the car meet. First car was this big body Lexus with some nice three piece wheels, but on the inside he had the peacock. It was a memorial piece for me. Thank you so much. I'm glad I have inspired you some way. Uh, it's probably has nothing to do with me, but still very cool to see a peacock on a car anyways. Uh, every hood I tried to go look at, this hood was popped on this G and uh, I mean, there's intakes. I guess the G itself was actually like pretty clean. I like the wheel setup. The Fimin was all right. I mean, it, it, it's better than poking out. I'd rather it be sunken in a little bit than poking out. But the body itself was in pretty good shape. Surprising nowadays. These things are usually clapped out. And this thing completely out of its element. What what, what the hell are you doing here, buddy? We have a Chevelle SS at a ratchet ass car. Me, what the hell are you doing here, my boy? Anyways, this thing was absolutely beautiful. My boy uh, and I were talking about it for a minute, just looking at it. We were just, like, in awe that this thing actually pulled up. I mean, he just parked in the middle of the aisle, and I don't blame him. I, mean, I would do the same shit. What the fuck? I'm not going in a parking spot in this car. You could eat my ass. Next car was this Mark V Super. Nothing really impressive about the car itself, but it is in the Inazitec blue that I was going to do on the Super before I chose the red. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys. You can see that little pink shimmer, and that was kind of like the little selling point that I liked. I liked that it had that little shimmer to it, so it looked like just a normal baby blue, but it has that little uh, little pearl in it. That was kind of cool. The color itself was fine. I mean, it works fine on the Mark V, but I'm, I'm kind of happy I didn't put it on my Mark IV. I don't think it would have worked with the body style. Next car, we have a Mustang with his hood up, so we got to do a hood check. Underneath the hood, we have a Vortec or Paxton. I forgot. I, I can't read it. The text is so small. It's a centrifugal supercharger. It goes like this, whoosh, whoosh, you know, like, you know, blowy, blowy air, air, sucky, sucky. It does that. It pushes air. Now, he didn't really have a crazy tire. I think it was a Nitto. Um, again, I didn't want to go bother him. He was standing back there. I'm, I'm a shy cat, okay? I'm not, I'm not really one to go and just stare at this dude point blank. Next hood check was on the Celica and underneath the hood. Oh, I could still smell the, the fresh spray paint. You actually could smell it. It was either his, his actual paint on his car or it was that. I mean, it looked brand new. It looked like he had just painted it that afternoon. So I wouldn't doubt it with the heat of the engine. It, it you know, it made it smell like fresh paint. The car needs some fresh paint, though. Paint your car. Next car was a Shelby GT500 with its hood up. So I did a baby little hood check because it was like it wasn't up all the way. It was just a little baby hood check um, underneath the hood. I mean, yeah, it was Shelby. Mm hmm. Might as well go buy one right now. Go buy one. Z01. Nah, Shelby GT500, baby. Go get one right now. I didn't know it was a Shelby until I walked up to it, honestly. That's why I don't like black cars. You can't see all the detail. I really couldn't tell that it was a Shelby until I walked right up to it. Speaking of Shelbys, why not the GT350? It's younger brother, or older brother, I guess, because it came out earlier. Um, but yeah, I, I love these GT350s. I don't like when people whipple them and stuff. I, I think it's just a great track car as is. It's like getting a Camaro Z28. Like, yeah, you, you could throw a big blower on that. Yeah, you could throw turbos on that. But it's a great track car. It is so well balanced. It's a sin to do anything else. Last car before the event that you guys all want to see was this SC300. Uh, rarely see SC300s that I do like. And this one was clean. I mean, I don't think it was on TE37s. So those might have been the he he 37s which is fine. I mean, it is what it is. Everyone's going to start somewhere. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was in good shape. Uh, my boy Alex needs to remove his wide body because I like it better without it.
Although it's not my car. Anyways, now let's take a look at this guy who definitely regrets doing a burnout. Yo! Yo, fire! Yo, fire! 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 Yo! Fire! 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 Yo! Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You guys are thinking, Drew, why didn't you go over there and help him? What could I have done? I, I can't put out a fire by looking at it. Uh, I didn't have any water. I didn't need to take a piss. Uh, so there was really nothing I could have done except document. Uh, so I was just working as the press right there, doing a little journalism, you know, you know, putting on putting my degree to use, which I don't have. I don't have a degree, by the way. Uh, but yeah, you know, I just, I was, I was in awe, honestly. I, I literally didn't even... Like, I couldn't comprehend what was going on. I was just staring at it like, damn, this shit's on fire. I thought his car was going to go up completely because I thought the trunk liner inside was going to just light. And then the interior, I thought it was done. But now they put it out uh, somehow and then ruined the car meet for everyone. Anyways, guys, after that, the cops came. It got ratchet. It's time to leave. He kind of ruined it for everyone because the fire department got called. And so, of course, a swarm of cops came, kicked everyone out. So we couldn't really walk around anymore. Uh, yeah. So we were, in, we were not at this meet for that long. It was honestly disappointing. Um, the Cars and Coffee was much better. Although there was no car on fire at Cars and Coffee. So that's one thing this meet did have over it now i don't know why everyone runs like an idiot when the cops come like it, it's not that serious they can't arrest all of you so i don't know what the point of that is but this uh pontiac g8 that's serious that tire right there is serious he means business hopefully you guys enjoyed this video uh maybe that'll be a lesson to not do like long ass burnouts or something out of car me i didn't hear the burnout so i don't know if that's what he did but that's the only thing that makes sense unless someone just ripped one stinky ass fart right next to his wheel and his brakes were hot or something but i, I can't think of another explanation uh luckily this guy's got an excuse he was just delivering pizza so he's good but anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did please let me know down below subscribe and until next video peace